Welcome to our continuing study on the book of Romans. And Romans chapter 11 is a fascinating chapter because two quite differing opinions have been held on this chapter regarding the future of the nation of Israel, physical Israel. And the reason is because they are uh, interpretations come from different generations. Prior to 1948, when the Jews were allowed to return to their homeland at the end of the Second World War, the Jews had been without a homeland, without a country, without a capital for nearly 2,000 years. And so the great reformers and uh, Puritan divines read uh, the book, uh, the chapter of uh, Romans 11, quite differently from how it is read today. Since the return of the Jews in 1948 to their homeland, uh, it's now been reread, as it were, and uh, there's a clear belief that actually God will do something dramatically with physical Israel, either before his return or on his return. But let's look at the first section now and how it would have been interpreted by the great reformers prior to 1948. I'm going to read from chapter 11, verse 1. Paul is asking, I asked then, did God reject his people? By no means. I'm an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Paul's arguing that he's a Jew. God has not rejected his people on a wholesale basis. There was a group of Jews who came through at Pentecost. We know the early church grew to 5,000 quite quickly, and they went out and shared the gospel worldwide. Uh, and obviously there were many Jews among those messengers and uh, apostles that went out. Um, he's going to argue that actually... God made no commitment for every single uh, descendant of Abraham. His promise, his commitment was to those who would remain faithful. So listen to his argument. Don't you know what the scripture says in the passage about Elijah? How he appealed to God against Israel. Lord, they've killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I'm the only one left and they're trying to kill me. And what was God's answer to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So during Elijah's time in the Old Testament, when the nation had gone apostate and worshipped Baal under Ahab and Jezebel, uh, Elijah said, I'm the only one left to God. And God said, no, no, there's 7,000 in this nation that have not bowed their knee, and I've reserved them for myself. And so there's the picture that God's got his own people, although the majority might reject him, God's got his own remnant amongst the Jewish nation. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if by grace, then it is no longer by works. If it were, grace would no longer be grace. So what he's saying there is that God has his people among the Jews. At the time that Paul was writing and throughout the na uh, nation's history, there are those who would have come to faith and be what we call a remnant. And God has not been unfaithful. God has honored his commitment that those who believed in him, he would bless. Those who had faith like Abraham would be blessed. That's his argument. And you can see why the early reformers and Puritan divines said, okay, God has been faithful to the nation of Israel. He doesn't have to do anything more. Verse 7, what then? What Israel sought so earnestly, it did not obtain, but the elect did. The others were hardened, as it is written. God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes so that they could not see, and ears so that they could not hear to this very day. And he's now quoting from Deuteronomy 29.4 and Isaiah 29.10. So he's saying, by and large, the nation has rejected the Messiah, and that was part of God's ultimate plan, that God allowed sin to run its course. God didn't restrain them from sin, and therefore they were hardened against 
the belief in their Messiah. And so that when the Messiah came, they uh, did not believe in him and they rejected him and they actually persecuted those who did believe in Jesus as the Messiah. And he's quoting from their scriptures to say, there it is in your very scriptures that you would be hardened. And then he carries on with another quote. And David says, may their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a retribution for them. May their eyes be darkened so they cannot see and their backs be bent forever. And that's from Psalm 69, verses 22 and 23. Another scripture from their greatest king, again explaining the rejection by the nation of Israel, physical Israel, of God's de desire and plan for them to walk with him and ultimately leading to the rejection of the Messiah. So if you stopped at there, at the passage there, and that was the end of Romans 11, you could quite easily be heard to say, God's got nothing further to do with the Jewish nation, physical Israel. He's had his remnant. He's always got his remnant. He's been faithful to those who have committed themselves to believe in him. It's his grace, his sovereign election, he's laid his hand on his own. Those are his people. And God in no way has violated his word or his commitment that he promised throughout the Old Testament. He's given people opportunity. They've rejected him. But he's always got the faithful few, the remnant that have come through to faith. Now, that was the understanding of the great theologians of the last few centuries until 1948. But then tomorrow we're going to see how in the rest of Romans 11, there's indications again and again that there's a future for the Jewish nation. So stand by. We'll see you tomorrow. Let's pray. Father, we just today want to acknowledge that you always have your remnant chosen by grace, your people. And we live in a world where the majority doesn't believe you, where many will reject you and despise you and curse you and persecute those who follow you. But Lord, thank you that each one of us can say, I'm part of the remnant. I'm part of his people. I'm part of his flock. And he's laid his hand on me and called me as a remnant, the few who will honor and serve uh, you, Lord Jesus. We know the way to heaven is narrow and hard and only few make it. And thank you that we can be counted as one of yours today. We ask your Holy Spirit strength now to enable us to remain faithful to the end. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow for the remainder of chapter 11 of the book of Romans.